So it's been a while. It's good to be back. Um, introduction for those of you who haven't been to my channel before. My name is Rachel. I lived in Finland for four years and it really impacted my life in a great way. It opened my eyes to see things that I hadn't seen before. I really feel like sometimes you need to get outside of something in order to see it for what it really is. So in this video I'm comparing three Finnish systems to American systems and these systems I really wish that we could adopt here in America. So let's take a look. Finland's education system is regarded to be one of the best in the world. They have the shortest school day and shortest school year in the entire Western world. They believe they do better by going to school less. There is less focus on homework and results and more focus on finding what the student is good at and aims to help them learn what makes them happy. Formal education doesn't start until seven years old. Pre-K and kindergartners can attend one of Finland's four schools, where 95% of the school day is spent outdoors exploring, playing, and learning about the world around them. At 9th or 10th grade, students can choose to go to a vocational school or the regular high school route. Finnish citizens and foreigners coming from within the European Union or European Economic Area can receive higher education tuition free. However, there are some fees the students must pay, like healthcare on campus, books, laptops, and admin fees. Foreign students coming from outside the EU or EEA have to pay tuition, but it is significantly less than tuition in America. Finnish schools are more student directed, which promotes individuality. All schools in Finland are equal. There is no competition and there is no ranking. So regardless of a family's socioeconomic status, everyone has access to basic education. And a side note, in Finland, 69% of the population can speak more than one foreign language. 47% speak at least two languages and 23% speak three or more foreign languages whereas 75% of Americans only speak their mother tongue. American schools center around results-based curriculum. America teaches to the standardized test. One third of the time in school is spent preparing for the standardized test. On average, each student takes some 112 mandatory standardized tests between pre-K and the end of 12th grade. That's an average of about eight a year. On top of these are teacher written tests and anywhere from one to three and a half hours of homework each night. Average time spent on homework for grades one through three is 20 to 30 minutes. Grades four through five, 40 to 50 minutes a night. Upon graduating from high school, students can attend a vocational school, community college, or university. Unless the student receives a scholarship, grant, or comes from a family that can afford to pay high tuition costs, the student will have to take out a loan in order to further their education. About 71% of college students graduate in debt. Since 1978, college tuition and fees have increased by 1,120%. Research shows the average college graduate with a bachelor's degree takes just over 21 years to pay off his or her loans. The handling and sorting of municipal waste is regulated by Finnish law to protect the environment and public health. Only 1% of Finnish waste goes to the landfill. 60% is incinerated. 39% is recycled. This means 99% of municipal solid waste is recovered either as energy or material recycling. An example of waste recovered as energy is found at Riikin Voima Eco Voima Laitos plant, which began operating near the town of Varkaus, Finland in October 2016. The plant receives 145,000 tons of source-sorted municipal waste a year as fuel, and it generates 180 gigawatt-hours of district heat and 90 gigawatt-hours of electricity for the surrounding region. This is made possible largely in part to fins separating their trash. 
it is very easy to separate trash in Finland. Apartment blocks and housing cooperatives have their own handy shared collection points for paper, organic waste, cardboard and cartons, and some even have collection points on site for metal and glass. The supermarkets and shopping centers also have collection points. There is a bottle return system that pays 20 to 50 cents back per bottle for plastic and glass refillable bottles. Returned bottles are washed and reused several times. The return rate of plastic bottles in Finland is 94% for plastic and 100% for glass. Currently, only 10 of the 50 states in America have a container deposit legislation. The USA is the number one trash producing country in the world at around 1,609 pounds or 730 kilograms per person per year. This means that 5% of the world's people generate 40% of the world's waste. About 32.5 is recycled, 12.5 is incinerated, and 55% is buried in landfills. The highest point in Hamilton County, Ohio, near Cincinnati, is Mount Roomkey. It is actually a mountain of trash at Roomkey Sanitary Landfill towering 1,045 feet or 318.5 meters above sea level. Americans produce almost 35 million tons of plastic each year. This stuff takes up to 500 years to break down and only 10% gets recycled. Until 2017, China and Hong Kong were responsible for processing about half of all U.S. plastic waste, but has since stopped receiving our plastic garbage. Recycling centers in the U.S. have stopped receiving plastic, or if they do receive it, it is being stored or will likely end up in a landfill. These are startling statistics, but I am hopeful that this will spark ingenuity and open the way for some innovative ways to process our own waste. Because of the mass incarceration epidemic, the USA has the highest incarceration rate in the world. While again, the US represents just under 5% of the world's population, it houses 25% of the world's prisoners. Roughly one in every 100 American adults is behind bars. Since the 1980s, the prison population has risen 700%. Prison is a growing industry. Between 1990 and 2010, the number of privately operated prisons increased by 1600%. In contract with the government, some private prison companies demand a minimum occupancy of more than 90%. If occupancy rates aren't fulfilled, the government pays for the empty beds. Compared to the rest of the world, every U.S. state relies too heavily on prisons and jails to respond to crime. Many nonviolent first-time offenders will spend years in jail due to mandatory minimum sentencing. Prisons in America are often referred to as crime schools. Prisoners leave better able to commit the crimes they were originally sentenced for. Historically, American prisons have offered few opportunities for rehabilitation or ways for inmates to better themselves and lay the foundation for a different type of life once back out on the outside. This is what they create in here, monsters. And then they drop you into society and tell you, go ahead, be a good boy. Children as young as 13 years old have been sentenced to die in prison. And our prisons violate international standards by using solitary confinement as punishment, which has been proven to have detrimental psychological effects and in some cases constituted torture. The U.S. spends $80 billion a year on incarceration only to send convicts unchanged back into society. Finland has an incarceration rate of only 1%. Only around 50 per 100,000 inhabitants are incarcerated. That's because Finnish government sees prisons as costly and unproductive. 
They understand that merely locking someone up does not get to the root issue of what led the criminal there in the first place. The judicial system sees criminals as individuals with psychological needs that need to be carefully attended to. Finland has a rehabilitation-oriented punishment system. In Finland, prison is a last resort. A prisoner in Finland can be sent to either a conventional prison or an open prison. Open prisons are an extreme form of minimum security prison. Inmates aren't kept under lock and key or watched over by guards 24 hours a day. Instead, they work in the community earning around $8 an hour and are free to walk around and shop in the local town. They even get short holidays and time at home with family. One third of prisoners now serve time in open prisons in Finland. By gradually reintegrating convicts back into society, their chances of reoffending drop by 20 to 25 percent. Recidivism is the tendency of a convicted criminal to reoffend. Finland's recidivism rate is around 35 percent. A U.S. Bureau of Justice statistics study found inmates released from U.S. state prisons have a recidivism rate of 76.6 percent. It's obvious that Finland's humane approach to punishment and efforts to treat psychological and other issues is working to make Finland a safer place. Although the U.S. and Finland share vastly different demographics and therefore different challenges, it isn't hard to see that a lot could be learned from one of the safest and most humanitarian countries in the world.